Are you just gonna continue that? Oh my god. <laughs> No, I, I I lied. I've had them. I've had Greek salads, so I've had them. Yeah, as long as they're pitted. But you know, sometimes people say that they're pitted, and then there will be a seed up in them. One thousand percent of bitten the seed. Yeah, and crack. You could crack your tooth on one of them things, but I love them so much. They they bring a certain, je ne sais quoi, to a pasta salad. Not you on here speaking different languages. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, man. Yo, so. Uh, hello everyone. We back. We'll get to y'all in a second. We will. We will. We will. I promise. Yo, the last. All right. So, God is uh is really like I don't know. He's like adjusting my patience level. So, for those of you who don't know, I'm about to brag a little bit. And the year was 2022. Was it 2022? Yeah. I bought the laptop I have now. It is a Lenovo Legion, fully decked out. Maximum RAM, GTX 3080 graphics card, top-notch screen. And this laptop has been baby. This laptop stays in the house. I th have I even traveled with this laptop? I don't think I've even ever traveled with it. Got the battery saver mode on. So my laptop won't fully charge. So I won't kill the battery. It'll charge at like 60% and then it has like a special internal thing that cuts it off and yeah. So never spilled anything on it. It's clean. Been using I only and I use it lightly. I don't even game on it. Like it's a gaming laptop. Tell me why last week oh. I used it, right? Woke up the next day. I'm like, "Yo, oh, I need to send myself a file real quick." Why my keyboard not working? Ooh. The whole keyboard not working. The LED lights not coming on. Nothing. Now, when I cut it on, something does flash underneath, like the lights underneath the escape button and the number lock button. But it just stopped working, right? So I'm going to tell you this customer service experience. Um, I'm 50-50. Uh -oh. I'm happy and I'm sad. So, funny enough, my warranty ran out, <laughs> you guessed it, March of this year. <laughs> yeah, right? Because that's how it happens. Because that's exactly, and I'm talking about pristine, yo. Like, if you saw my laptop, you would think it's brand new. Like, it's no stains, it's no markings. Like, I literally only podcast on this thing, browse the internet, do our social media stuff, like the templates and stuff on Canva, but like... I don't take it anywhere and nobody else uses this laptop ever because it was expensive. I'll say this without my coupons that I got shout out to Lenovo on coupon. This laptop was like almost, I think it was like 3,400, something like that. Yeah. My nerd friends are freaking out. They're like, Oh, you should have bought a desktop. Problem with that is when you buy a desktop, you guessed it. You got to buy a screen. You got to buy a monitor to go with it. That's what people don't consider. So, yeah. Anyway. So, of course, I hit up Lenovo. Get the customer service online. And she's talking to me. She's like, what do you have? And I told her, what I have? Oh, no. I have to get you over to the special line. What? Oh. Special? And I thought about <laughs> it. I'm like, okay. She must have been for, like, the regular, regular laptops. So, I'm like, all right, cool. Gets me over to the special joint. Buddy talking about he can't hear me. Bruh, don't lie. I hear your baby crying in the background. You got a, <laughs> you got a lot going on. It's cool. It's cool. Right? It ain't me. It's you. But it's cool. So he's like, oh, we can get you fixed up. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you got to reactivate your warranty. You got to reactivate your warranty. So, I, so, as, so this is just me. I'm a person who's been through a lot of these situations in life. I cut through the bullshit. I said, yeah, I saw that on my computer. I was like, go ahead and give me the discount code, man. I was like, we ain't got to do all the talking and back and forth. I was like, I'm going to need it because I'm not buying another laptop and I'm not taking this to a rinky-dink place. Like, it's a brand new computer, basically. Um, so you go ahead and give me the discount code. And it was like 60 bucks or something like that. Um, so I reactivated the warranty. Here's the catch. You got to wait 30 days before you can use it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Why do you have to wait 30 days? I knew that before I bought it. 
But still, yeah, that's what I said. It was like a registration period or some shit. Um, if you take the money out my account, don't get me started on that, yo. Did they take the money? <laughs> oh, they. Oh, I need to check my business bank account. They should have taken the money. But anyway, yeah, I mean, it's well worth it for them to fix it. You know what I'm saying? Um, cause I have no idea what's wrong. And some people are like, oh, just open it up. Let me tell you something about Rob. When something is not in my wheelhouse, I'm going to pay a professional. Period. The end. Yes, I can go buy a laptop kit and open up my computer and look at the ribbon cable. and I could do that. I could, right? No. You know why? Because if I break something or muck something up, guess who else got to pay and fix it? Me. But if I pay a professional to do it, the accountability falls on you. And this laptop is an investment. It has served us very well. And it will continue to serve us very well because it functions flawlessly other than the lap, the, the keypad. But I digress. So that had me like extremely frustrated because I don't buy a lot of expensive stuff. Like this laptop, actually shit, my car, but that's 2015. This laptop and my Xbox are the most expensive things I own. Excluding guns. But that's besides the point. Actually, no. Yeah, this laptop is second. So I don't buy a bunch of expensive stuff. But when I do, it's because it's an investment that I'm going to continuously use. Or like my Xbox, it's, that's my form of entertainment. So those of you who like to go out, travel trips, nothing wrong with that. I'll be right here. I do like to travel, ladies, though. I'm just saying. But, um, yeah, so like you take care of your investment. So that's why it pissed me off. Because I'm like, yo, I know I've taken like the best of care of this thing like how how sweet my nephew don't even use my laptop he only plays my xbox nobody uses this thing so i it, yeah that had me distraught yo because i'm like what the fuck is happening like you this is i ain't never had nothing like this happen in my life like your keyboard just stopped working and i've had some cheap ass laptops too like i'm talking about 400 dollar laptops that are still run strong right now <sighs> so that happened. Something else happened. Oh, man. I'm going to leave that story for another time. I'm not going to put that story on here. I'll save it for another time. What's been up with you, Erica? I got to tell you about it. Well, my nephew. Oh. My nephew story. Well, my almost oh, nephew okay. story. Yeah, I'm going to leave that off here for now. Okay. Um, Nothing Nothing really tired. Work has been kicking me, but I mean, it kicks me every day of every week. I've... <laughs> I don't know why I be waiting and thinking I'm gonna go on a summer vacation when I'm not. No, absolutely but, not. Go to work every day. Yeah, and it's just emails on emails on emails. And I'm like, whatever happened to the days where you just be? But yeah, so work, tired, and also I complained to my parents too because I said it seems like every weekend it's been go 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 go. Like there's no day I can sleep in. I'm always out doing something. I'm tired. I want to relax. You ain't hide. doing nothing, Major. Sit down. I want to like hide under the covers, sleep all day. Mm. You you never have one of those days where you just want to be in the bed. Oh, that's who I am. What do you mean? Yeah, that that is who I am. Down deep down in my heart, in my soul. So no, that's who I am externally. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, and people get mad I'm, at me for that. Like, that's what I, I don't get. You don't go like, nowhere. It's called saving damn money. That, and they're like, we not going to invite you no more because you never show up. And it's like, no, I just be tired. Oh, I just yeah. be tired. That happened to me. That happens to me. And I, and I tell them, I say, hey, always invite me. Because that one time I am going to show up. But most of the time I'm not. But <laughs> invite me, you man. I still, I still love you. I like to be able yeah. to turn down shit. It makes me feel good on the inside. It lets me know I still got options <laughs> out there, you know? I just, I, I like being a part of stuff and being able to go out and everything. But at the same time, I just be missing my bed. And I know my bed be missing me. Mm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, because my job is boring. So, uh, yeah, I be tired. And I go to bed. Dumb. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to uninstall this. I go to bed dumb early like 
my uh my hey you need to wind down and go to sleep it starts at 7 30 and i try to be asleep by no later than 10 o'clock now because i'm like yo i can't keep doing this i'm like i don't know if it's mm-hmm. age i don't know if it's just yeah. who i am um and i gotta wake up mad early so uh i don't know but i'm with you on that uh i'm gonna have to get into some deep things today sorry um <laughs> i am i am i am all right, well, we'll we'll go ahead and uh, cue the music here. Yeah, what's going on, everybody? We are back with another episode of From My Experience Podcast. I'm your host, Rob. I got the co-hostess with the mostest, Erica, with me. Why are you bobbing your head like you hear the music? I, I heard the down, down, and then I was about it. <laughs> My goodness, man. How y'all been out there? Have you been taking care of yourselves physically, mentally, and financially? Uh, I sort of have. I've been stress eating, not gonna lie, but I did co- go to the gym today, actually. Um, and ooh, Lord, my thighs are gonna have to pay for the red lobster biscuits I got today. We're gonna get into a couple things today. I'm gonna be talking about your conscience. Do you listen to your conscience? Yeah. to start off very ignorant i apologize <laughs> hold on let me let the let me let the beat mellow all the way out before i get ignorant hey on your burner account you be watching the pop the balloon dating show clips oh my goodness they eat all over my twitter too mm-hmm. so I'm and be- every time i'm like why why are we going to this warehouse and do that so i'm about to be ignorant and rude i'm sorry there's this one guy. I forgot what he said his actual name was, but he ain't got no neck, and no neck is in his nickname. You probably seen. Oh, this one. is he the, like the big swole dude? No, not the big swole dude that they got fired. Um, that's a whole. Yeah. Story. Um, it's no. Okay. He literally was like this. Got down and ain't got down. Oh. Shot it. Shot it. No neck. Like that's what he said his name was. And then the host tried to shoot him some bills. He was like, nah, dog, you got it. He was like, why you call yourself that? Goddamn, I got no neck. You know what I'm saying? My daddy dropped my ass. So, goddamn. I was like, what? Your dad dropped you and you have no neck? I'm like, yo, I don't know if this cap or what. I- <laughs> ah, that's not funny. But, yo, how you introduce yourself like that? And then all the ladies immediately popped, of course. Um, all you of can't them. be surprised when they, pop the, when they pop the balloon. Yeah, it's just sad. But <sighs> it's sad. Yeah, um, I I did go back and watch one show because, um, you know, people don't people don't listen for context. And one guy was on there, and this girl popped, and they were like, "Oh, he was rude, blah blah blah." And I didn't like that. I don't like. I I generally don't like when men attack women and women attack men based off of clips. And I was listening to their conversation in the clip, and I was like, there's probably more to this. So I went and watched the whole thing. Not the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I just fast forward to that part. Shorty actually took back her pop, and then she chose him. So I, you know I went in the comments. I was like, yeah, for those then of you saying one, two, three, four, I was like, if you would actually take the time and go look at the episode, she actually took it back. And she apologized because the co-host, the co- the host actually took dude's side and was like, nah, that's not what he was trying to say. This is, she was like, you taking it wrong. Like, I don't know why you're taking offense, but that's, that's not what I heard. That's not what he said. And she tried to put words in his mouth or whatnot. And she took it back and they, and she ended up, um, they ended up picking each other. So I laughed and I was like, that's why context is important. You can't just look at a clip, you know? Um, but overall, uh, I just wonder where black people are going to be. I say that like I'm not black Jesus. Um, Just where we're going to be as a culture in like the next 10 years. Like there's just a lot of ugliness and down putting that we're putting out there. And again, I talk about this. Our counterpart counterparts don't do it. Like you may see some celebrity news about them, but where is the white version of the balloon pop show? Is it all these uh, dating shows on Netflix? What is that? Love Island? Is that their version of it? Like, these mugs be so brutal. And 
I think people take first impressions way too far and way too seriously. They're important, but they're not everything. Because there's some people that I couldn't stand when I first met them that are probably my closest friends now. Um, but that show, it it is funny sometimes. And I do like the, the, the intelligent clips they play when there's actually dialogue. But, like, y'all really just be telling each other how ugly y'all look. Like, that each other look. And it's just, it's so sad. And it's bad. And it's like, this is what we doing right now? Now, you were going to talk about uh, the plumber guy. Yeah, because that was the one that I saw a lot about. And I was like, and people were basically in a, trying to get him fired from his job. I'm like, yeah, we, we may not like what he says, whatever. But it's social media. I feel like some people have kind of taken the extreme where it's kind of like, I don't know how to describe it, but I have seen conversation about how social media culture has changed, I guess, since COVID where people feel like entitled to certain things. And also yeah. where if you say, oh, I like pancakes. It, oh, so waffles suck. Basically, yeah. they're, they don't know how to just infer or how to not put words into other people's mouths. And then they want to call for everyone to be canceled. Cancel, cancel, cancel. It's like, no, I want to I want to find your job. Not only do I want to find your job, but I also want to find your family. I want to tell your family how rude you were to me mm -hmm. in this social media interaction where why, why are we bothering that much? Especially when we would never talk to people online like how we would in real life. Yeah, that part. Um, to me, I, I saw that clip a couple times. I mean, basically, he, he got defensive, you know, but he was like, you know, you ain't even qualified. You ain't even qualified, but that's all right. Um, because of some of the stuff that they were saying about him. I mean, his look was a bit out there, you know what I'm saying? And then one of the girls even got... So I, this one took me. She's like, I mean, damn, you stocky as hell. Like, damn, you can't be in shape now? You can't be buff? Like, that's bad? Like, we can't do nothing, yo. I got to find that clip where someone, like, a girl says something, and then the dude swipes his screen, and it was like, list of things, dude, list of things I can't do as a man. And he scrolls, and it's like number 400 or something, and he adds what yeah. she just said. Cause I'm just like, damn. But... Um, if it's true, he said they people got him fired, called and complained, which what the fuck does that show have to do with you being a plumber? Exactly. Right? So exactly. there's there's that. But bruh, now hold up, hold up. There's some bullshit happening because you looked in that girl's face and you said I can take a hundred grand out of the bank. Can you say the same thing? And but you got a GoFundMe up uh, allegedly. So hold what what mm -hmm. What's happening? She did try to play him and say, oh, you're giving roommate vibes. And he was like, I live downtown by myself. So, I don't know. It. I, I feel like, to me, I just see a lot of misguided anger and aggression. Somebody called you ugly when you were younger or you got played by a dude or a woman someplace in your life. And this is your opportunity to take it out. Or it's your opportunity to take offense. But here's the thing. We don't have to be nasty. Like, you can just say, I'm just not attracted to you. Like, and I get it. It's entertainment. It's a show. It's supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be edgy. It's supposed to be catchy. But that's, like, some of the stuff that the people say on there is so rude and nasty. Yeah. And it's just like, you would never want someone, you would never want a woman to talk to your dad like that or your brother or your son. But this is what you're spewing. And vice versa. You wouldn't want anyone to talk to your daughter or your sister or your mother like that. But this is what you're spewing. Um, and y'all look. I don't understand why people sign up for them. Entertainment. True. I mean, you're not you. You're looking for love. Like that's not a dating show. Yeah. Like it's it's not. There needs to be it's more just... layers to it. But I mean, it is entertaining. I'll give y'all that. It is entertaining when it comes up. Sometimes I watch it. But now it's starting to actually. I'm starting to see the same clips. It's starting to recycle. So I'm just kind of like, um, eh. um, and I'm starting to see the parody versions of people copying it, which. I complained about last episode, like, damn, like, what, can can y'all be mm -hmm. original? Like, fuck pop the balloon, do something different, you know what I'm saying? Shake up and squirt a soda bottle or something, I don't know, but I As digress. It, it just looks like you just sign up for people to tear you apart looks twice, and for you to be, like, the butt of a joke. I just, yeah, you get money from it, probably, and it's entertainment, but honestly, like, 
Yeah. I don't see how you could do that. Before <laughs> And I then can... you get defensive. <laughs> yeah, and then you get defensive. So it's like it's like no one forced you to sign up. No one forced you to exactly. Exactly. And it's crazy. But dude actually I just saw a video of dude, um plumber dude, and he was like how people were tagging him in videos of the women on there and someone was like, Oh, I'm I'm this is just a rebound for me. One person said they was there to network. One person said, I'm just casually dating. But the show was supposed to be about actually finding love and a meaningful connection. He was like, so why would you come on the show? That's not what you're here for. And he was he seemed sincere. He didn't trash anyone. He didn't dog anyone. He didn't talk down anyone. He sounded genu- genuinely disappointed. Like, damn, y'all on here bullshitting when there's people on here coming on here for the purpose, quote unquote, air quotes, of the show. And some of y'all know that that's the purpose of the show and you coming on here for with ulterior motives like i guess you're just trying to be seen or something but i don't mm-hmm. know but before a viral moment oh yeah uh, which never mind we're not even gonna go there you you got headlines <laughs> before i continue down this road oh yes i do let me hit the music <laughs> you good okay so for a big one today five people have been charged with bribing a juror with $120,000 in cash during the Feeding Our Future fraud trial. Here we go, here we go, here we here we I'll be down. So they've been indicted for their alleged roles in the bribery attempt of a juror during earlier this month and the juror was dismissed after reporting that a woman dropped a bag of cash at her home and offered her more money if she would vote to acquit the seven people charged with stealing more than 40 million dollars from a program meant to feed children during the pandemic i'll be Uh, down i'll be down I'll, i'll be down it's estimated that this scam and fraud has diverted about 250 million dollars in federal funds wow um and what some officials have been calling it the largest pandemic fraud in the united states because they were spending this on luxury cars jewelry travel and property when it was supposed to go to low-income children um black children i'll be down i'll I'll, I'll be down and apparently the five defendants they targeted the 23 year old juror because she was the youngest and because they believe she was the only juror of color hold on who pulled the scam off black people yeah i'll be down i'll be down i'll be down i'll be down um, it's I'll like a, it's a really big, it's a really big fraud trial. Apparently, they have. I'll like be damned. I'll be damned. They have like, like forty five people are expected to go on trial for this. But for right now, there the five defendants found the juror's information online, including her home address. So, <laughs> on June second, they drove to the juror's house where they handed her a gift bag containing the cash $120,000 to one of their one of her relatives and promised there would be more money if they would just vote to acquit the defendants and also if they can convince the jury that this is not guilty and that this was motivated by racism yeah Okay, so I don't, I don't have no words, yo. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I I didn't even know that there was this, a like this big fraud trial going on. Like that's Me so either. how out of I am, and I was like, "Are you serious?" Nah, I, so, I, I like flow through different channels, and I've been listening. The Breakfast Club. I'm surprised they haven't reported on that. Maybe they might yeah. have done it today. I didn't listen to the Breakfast Club today. Yeah, I'm hoping, but yeah, I just thought that was so crazy. Um. In other news, Volkswagen is recalling more than 271,000 SUVs because of a faulty airbag. And so they've been telling people, I'll be damned. Do, not have, do not have people ride in the passenger seat because the front passenger airbag doesn't work sometimes. I'll be damned. Um, because it may not inflate in case you get into a car crash. And it's basically covering just Atlas SUVs from 2021 through 2024, those model years, and some 2020 through 2024 Atlas Cross Sport SUVs. 
And apparently dealers will replace the sensor mat and wiring harness for no cost, which they should have been doing. Um, and they are expected to get letters. Owners of these cars are expected to get letters starting August 16th. And apparently there has been 1,700 warranty claims that could be related to the problem. <laughs> I don't know. If you have a Volkswagen, be safe out there. Okay. Yeah, That's be all. Safe. Um, the 2024 NBA draft is happening tonight. Well, when you guys listen to this, it would already happen. So, Mr. Wilson, I I know that you're not really in there with the sports or anything like that, but people are talking about Bronny and what the draft might be like for him. Do you have anything to say? He answered the draft? Yeah, he did. The last time I heard something about Bronny, they said he wasn't ready. I wouldn't know because, like you said, I didn't watch, but I vaguely remember he was in some type of summer league and his stats just weren't anything special. Um, yeah. So I don't, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, if he gets drafted, they're breaking history for LeBron and Bronny to be father and son playing in the NBA at the same time. That's never happened? No. Oh. I, I thought he wanted so. to play on the same team too, but they do. Um, I before LeBron retires. From an outside looking in, not understanding the business and how deep things may go, I feel like I don't know. This is, I mean, this is the opportunity he created for himself, and his dad has helped create for him. But at the same time, is there someone more deserving? I feel like you're taking someone's spot who's probably more deserving or better suited for the role. Um, You, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that works. I mean, typically you're they're drafting people, and now these younger guys, like the ones they're drafting now, are like playing. Like these teams are getting young, and it's like so. What do I don't know. It's, it's like you de- you develop to a certain point in the league. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't come out red hot. Like, you know, a lot of these superstars, you didn't know who they were their first few years. You're still learning. But their game was more developed. And when it's time to step up, they were able to step up. I don't know how underdeveloped they were. But they were also, a lot of them were also great players before they got to the NBA. So, I don't know. I don't really have, a, I don't really have an opinion on you know him getting drafted other than what i just said because i i don't know if he will um we'll see that'll that'll be interesting and i mean all i can say is you know we promote positivity over here so if you get drafted uh i hope that you're able to step up and prove everyone wrong and create your own legacy don't try to live up to your dad's legacy because i mean you probably ain't gonna see that for a long time much like with jordan and kobe and uh, Shaq and a lot of great others so just be out there to create your own legacy because there's a lot of people's kids who are in the nba um a lot um yeah. lebron has played against a lot of their fathers and now he playing against the sons so because this new generation like i think it's Bronny, but then after that it's gonna be so many more so many more nba kids <laughs> yeah well We'll see. But I digress. Continue. My last headline, I love how we said we promote positivity. It's a negative one. Uh, Well, not really. Um, So we all know Justin Timberlake. He got arrested for a DWI um, back in, was it last week? Uh, Yeah, I want to say it was last week in Long Island. He was stopped by a cop who didn't even know who he was, really um because the cop was so young and apparently timberlake he failed to one keep to the right side of the road and when he did i'll be damned he failed and his he was intoxicated and his eyes were bloodshot and glassy and he had the strong odor of alcohol on his breath even though he said that he only had one martini Hmm. um so he was arrested. We've seen his mug shots and everything. He was released and he was at a concert because I mean, he's on tour and he basically said on his Chicago tour stop that it's just been a really rough week and a tough one. And he loves his fans and they love him and we'll get through this. 
Your headlines. Um, yeah. there's one more. There's a rest in peace. You didn't see that? What? You didn't, um, hold on. No, I didn't send it to you, so I forgot you don't be on, um, hold on. Gosh darn it. My man just passed away. Gosh dang it. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Actor Bill Cobbs, um, passed away at 90 years old. Uh, let me get here. Let me, let me, CNN, CNN. He's been in a lot of movies. He's my generation. Mm. Um, he's known for his roles in Demolition Man, That Thing You Do, Air Bud. He was in New Jack City. He's been oh. in a lot. Yeah, you recognize him? I had to see, I, yeah, I had to see yeah. his face. So I'm like, yeah, he has been. He was on Good Times, oh. The Equalizer, One Life to Live, Sesame Street. The hitter trading places, the color of he was money. An air <laughs> this man, this man, yeah, he one of them black dudes you just know when the movie come on. He one of the ones you know he about to be good. Like he's just, <laughs> it's gonna be good. <laughs> yeah, man. So rest in peace to him, man. Um, oh. those are your headlines. All right, y'all. Um. Before we get into the main topic of talking about uh, your conscience, we're going to talk about relationship stuff. Um, I think I want to break a rule real quick, though. Pause. We back. We've been ignorant. Okay, I had to <laughs> grab food and break a podcast rule. I am going to be eating, but I'm going to make sure y'all don't hear it. All right, so. That's the rule? Yeah, I hate when people eat on the microphone. <laughs> You know, sip a drink, cool, but it's like it sounds horrible. Shout out, Charlamagne. But I'll never hear it. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I I do. I be doing it all the time. There's a mute button. You know, use the mute button. But yeah, just <laughs> eating on the mic is cool. I mean, not cool. Just mute yourself and you're you're good. So, all right. So back to our relationship roots on this podcast. So this was posted by Amber Ty. And it says, fellas, is this true? Do you feel this pressure as what? Well, well, I'm going to play the clip and then I'll read the the thing. Um, I'll be damned. Put on that thing. It happened in your dating experience to where you're now like, yeah. It's a lot of pressure on black men, specifically dating black women. And I love black women. Social media and the culture has put a lot of pressure on us. This could be just based on environment. Mm-hmm. Um, when I moved to Atlanta, you know, women here are very entitled. Mm. Um, it's, and listen, I'm not blaming anybody, so I don't want this to turn into... When you say that. entitled, though, break, what does entitled um, mean? I'll say financially entitled. I feel extreme pressure. And I get hit on by white women. I get hit on by all kinds of women. But when I get hit on by black women, I immediately feel this entitlement <laughs> of I got to pay for something. Mm, wow. I gotta pay your rent. I gotta help you with your car note immediately within two weeks. Or I gotta. I'm just saying what I've experienced. I'm not saying that's every woman. Nowadays, if I take somebody on the four hundred dollars <laughs> immediately, and I don't even drink. So if she drink, that's a couple hundred. If the hookahs forty five, dessert chops is fifty. Dessert. Mm-hmm. So by the top, VIP valet. Or valet. I was just gonna say valet. So we just spent four hundred dollars for me to see if you like me. Say that again. Mm. <laughs> So it's like I'm spending and I'm spending and I'm spending. That's just the first date. You want to go out again. That's a, so I, I didn't spend $1,000 on three dates just to see if you might call me back or maybe text me back. And then because you're a beautiful woman, if you don't like me, you can go get the next man to do the same thing. So it says there's one part on that I really want to touch on, um, which is made me think about dating a fuck of a lot differently. Uh Fellas, is this true? Do you feel this pressure as well? To my melanated sisters, this conversation is being circulated daily. Are black women entitled or are we just demanding from our men what other women in other races get naturally? We This conversation with uh, Travis Malloy was raw, transparent, and controversial. Check out the full episodes of It's Negotiable Pod with... Miss 
Miss Ernestine Morrison and Amber Ty on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple. So shout out to y'all. Sorry I read it slow. I'm reading their handles and it's all jumbled together. So it doesn't make you. Damn, you got a funky look on your face. You mad? Oh, no. No, I was. <laughs> oh, you had to. I'm scratching you know, my scalp it, concentrated face. Okay. Yeah. I was like, damn, this part itch. So what, do, so what are your thoughts on what he said? Oh, my gosh. It's like. I always feel like it's such a slippery slope with me so much because people like to go into dating and going into these new experiences with new people, bringing everything from their old relationships or how they were treated in the past. And I feel like that kind of sets it up where you kind of already put yourself into this situation where you're already either stiff arming that person because you say, well, I'm not going to do this, that, the third, this, whatever, because of your previous relationships. But yet you're treating that new person. Oh, you're treating that new person when they don't have a reason to be treated that way. So with him saying that he feels pressure because black women are just entitled financially. I, I don't know. Maybe it's, I'm not going to negate or invalidate how he feels or his experiences with that, but I don't think I've ever come across uh, another Black woman who has wanted a dude to pay for her rent while dating at all. Um, I think, I don't think, yeah, I don't think I've ever experienced that one where I'm expecting someone to do that for me. And I don't think I've ever ran across someone who's expecting a man to do that for them if he's showing interest in them. Also, I agree with her caption. I do agree with her caption where it does come across just a little bit when you hear a lot of pushback and a lot of pushback and a lot of like black men that like to say, oh, well, I'm I'm not going to be this guy. I'm not going to be spending the money on this, that, the third, whatever, just so you, you can even see if you like me or not. Other races don't really go through that at all they actually go through courting and i noticed that with a lot of black women we don't have an actual courting that we go through uh, like a phase at all like we don't have a moment in like our dating history where we've been truly courted by somebody what is courting without it courting as in like you say that you want to go on a date you have interest in me mm -hmm. cool it's a first date you plan that date, mm -hmm. you know, you plan that date. Mm -hmm. Also, you come pick me up. Mm -hmm. You may have flowers, mm -hmm. you like things like that. And also being able to sit down with each other, have a dinner. And if it comes to the end of the day and you don't have any feelings for that person, that's fine. But you say it. But I don't think that a lot of I don't think a lot of black women have had a courting experience, but a lot of other races have where it's almost tradition. And I think because of that, there's this, I don't know. I think that kind of correlates with how dating is now where it's like, oh, well, you need to pay for something because you can't be the only one basically saying, oh, I'm not going to spend this, that, the third or whatever to get to know you because now the other person feels the same. It's like you guys have kind of already barricaded yourselves up where it's not going to move forward with anything because you won't let yourself be open, be vulnerable let yourself be rejected or anything uh this conversation scares the shit out of me because though i don't know him personally mm -hmm. this is stuff i hear i've heard on the internet right but haven't actually i have experienced yeah it. um you oh, but yeah. you don't know how real it is until someone tells you about their experience you know it's just clips on the internet but like he's really talking about his experience where i want to live fuck mm -hmm. so um I would say part of the, <laughs> ooh, sorry women, y'all might be mad. Um, I think part of it is women's fault, part of it's men's fault. Part of it is just coming from broken homes. This is learned behavior. Like mm -hmm. my dating style, I'm not perfect, right? My dating style came from my dad. Like the years when I really started getting interested in women and dating all that, I was living with my dad. I moved to Philly with him in 96. You know what I'm saying? So middle school, high school is when that really kicks up. And my dad was a quarter, but my dad, God rest his soul, he would do too much. And I used to do too much. And one, it was underappreciated. And two, I was taken advantage of. 
right? So, um, back to your courting thing, you can be nice, but if they know, oh, he's going to pay, all I got to do is flirt a little bit, the, the honesty is not there. Like, I've had women offer me all kinds of stuff and want to do all these things, but I'm like, nah, I'm not going to waste your time. Like, yeah, I want you to buy me this PlayStation. Yeah, I know I can get you to do this and I can get you to do that and you'll come over whenever I call, but like, I don't, I believe in the transfer of energy. I don't want that type of energy to come back on me. So nah, save your money, save your time, effort, and energy for someone that's going to appreciate what you're doing and that feels the same way. We don't get that. We don't get that. We might get that after five or six dates after he said, after you done spent some bread. I had a woman I dated. I took her on a few dates. I lived in Charleston, South Carolina. I used to drive up to Spartanburg three hours every other weekend to see her and pay for everything. So I'm driving three hours just to see you and paying for dates. Took her to a theme park. You know what I'm saying? And in the end, oh, I just think, I just think you're, you're just too nice and... I don't know. I think I, I just maybe too much like, like that. And it's like, but you, you knew that the second time I went, came to see you, you could see I was putting in the effort and courting you, but you let it continue. Even though you felt the way that you felt, you could have, you could have did that long ago. Mm-hmm. And one, I put the onus on them for just not being upfront and honest. But two, what I also realized, and this is not me to my own horn. I was the first guy to really treat, most of the women I've dated, I would they most of them have told me you're the first guy to treat me like this. Like you're the first guy to plan a date, pick me up, take me out, be nice to me, not just come after me for sex, actually call me, have conversation. And it's like either one, you like that, but you want that from someone else, or you didn't know how to handle it, and so you ended up taking advantage. Or we ended up in a relationship and it just didn't work out. So I feel where he's coming from, and I feel where you're coming from when you're talking about courting, but you got to remember, ladies, and this this is this is my biggest issue with these conversations. Stupid shit, like, if a guy asks you, hey, I'm taking you on it, like, because my home, I talked to my homie about this, and you know, I was like, I forgot what, how did we got on it, but he was like, you know, he said to his woman one time, like, on the second or third date, he was like, so when you going to take me on a date? And then, yeah. you know, <laughs> she was kind of like, oh, and she was like, he was like, you know, not trying to be rude or disrespectful, but you know what am what am I getting by taking continuously taking you out? Because he was like, you're. She was like, oh, you get my company, right? Mm-hmm. Which is the worst fucking answer. Don't ever say that. Because number one, you're also getting my company. So you're saying your company is more valuable than me? Because he was like, well, you're getting my company, you're getting my time, and you're getting my resources. Because I got to plan the date, I got to pay for the date, and all you got to do is look good and show up so is it equal this is me putting in effort to show you and i'm not saying it has to be sex y'all equate everything to sex you can actually get to know someone in a conversation and maybe on the second date when i show up with the flowers oh rob you know thank you you're so sweet i got you a little something or hey you know i made this yesterday when you drop me off when you get back i want you to take this to lunch tomorrow or hey i want to plan the next date that shit don't happen often. I'm going to tell you that now. I had a girlfriend who told me straight up, I don't like paying for stuff. I don't like paying for dates. But you like going out all the goddamn time. So what the hell? I I just think, you know, just I just pay when the mood hits me. Nigga, what? <laughs> I was like, so I'm playing the goddamn lottery with your ass. January, you might pay for a date, and I might not get another one till June, but you expect me to pay every time, and you'll pay when you feel like it. So my money is our money, but your money is your money. That's what I heard. These are just real, and that was a girlfriend who said this. I appreciated her being upfront and honest, and we didn't go out that often. We did go out, but we didn't go out often because I'm like, nigga, like, this ain't free. (laughs) It's not free. So, um, to your other point, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. I have another thing, no, but you're fine. Okay. Um, because it's all, it's all just like a, a mix of just stuff where you can see everyone's side in it. It, but you know what pisses me off? This is what pisses me off. It's, it's a simple, easy fix. 
It is. Simple. If you just, if you just act and give the effort back as it's given to you, it would have been done. But people feel, I don't know, some people, they're just scared. That's what it comes across as, where it's like, oh, well, I've been burned by this person way too many times in the past. I'm like, but this isn't that same person. You're you're basically just negating even moving forward. But this this even one that's that's one solution, perfect, right? Number two, open nice. your damn mouth. <laughs> hey, what are you looking for? Are you dating just for fun? Are you looking for something serious? Cool. What is what are you looking for a guy to do for you? What do you what do you want? What do you what does this process look like to you? Like what is ideal for you? Because some dudes know, right? Like th- that's the other thing. Y'all, this ain't y'all have to realize we ain't in the 90s in the era where we had those black love movies where we had so many examples of guys doing the right thing that we could steal from them and kind of learn to court and stuff like that. That shit don't exist no more. So this new age guy, sorry, you got to guide people. We are not mind readers. Hey, this is what this looks like for me. This is what I expect. You know, like, put it out there so a nigga knows. That way, one, you either going to get it or you're not. And two, it shows you if he's lis- how into you he is and how good of a listener he is. And vice versa. Like, this is what I expect to see from you. And I'm not saying oh, I want money, blah, 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 but like, you know, I want to just say I want to be courted. He might not know. Like some people might not know. You don't know how they grew up. Like that's learned behavior. Like I said, I learned how to court from my dad. Like I buy flowers. Like I bring small gifts. You you can go to Dollar Tree and get like women. A lot of women are actually very simple. Like the the smallest shit. You just got, go to Dollar Tree, get you a gift bag, get you the tissue paper. You know what I'm saying? Hit up Bath and Body Works, get the candles on just sale. Be thoughtful. Right, exactly. Like, get small little knick-knack things. And, you know, when you show up for a date every now and again, drop off a little gift. Bring fly- flowers. Bro, you can get flowers. If you live near a food line, you can get flowers for $5. Nice flowers that will last about a week and some change. Make sure they're not already bloomed all the way. To Make sure they're going to bloom and stuff. But, like, small, like you said, gestures. And then the other thing, too, is depending on where you're at in your life, Every date ain't got to be super catchy, fragilistic. $400 date? Oh, no, shorty. You got to work your way up to that. Nigga, you know what I can do with $400? I have never never been on no $400 date. First of all, me and my mom's monthly (laughs) groceries. Me and my mom, two grown-ass adults, we don't spend $400 a month on groceries. We can, like, $400 a month is about a month and a half of groceries at this time. I'm talking about the good stuff. Salad, fresh fruit. Because where y'all eat? Yes. <laughs> but you're paying for these experiences. But it's like, and the other thing too is like, you expect me to keep this up. That's another thing people say. Oh, the way you got me is the way you keep me. Okay. So what happens when I hold you accountable? That's That's a high rate, but I digress. And that's a lot to spend on just dating. We ain't in a relationship. You think I'm going to take you on a $400 date? But some people run in those circles. Some people have a certain lifestyle. Some people have a certain level of financial, whatever, whatever. So it's like, hey, I'm up here in this bracket. This is how we date in this bracket. Cool. But Buddy is a Grammy nominated such and such and such and such. And he like, yo, this $400. So if he's saying that, I kind of feel him, especially at the end when he and he brought up a good point that made me think. I'm doing this just to see if you might call or might text me back, because that's all it is. Y'all like to be fair and sorry, this is sexist or whatever or double standard. That's not even double standard. Y'all already win. You get if a dude takes you on a date. You win. You are getting a free meal out of it. Everything else is pretty much equal because, I mean, all you're doing is entertaining the conversation. And then, like he said, you can find somebody else and do the same thing again next week. We don't have that luxury. I just spent, I ain't going to use his numbers. Even if it's, I'll bump down to my level. Let's say I take you on two or three dates and I'm up to $200 and you decide you're not interested. I'm not about to run back out there and do that shit again, but it was free for you. You didn't have sex. 
You didn't really give up anything but your time, but I also gave up my time. So now if the next guy, the next day hollers at you, you can repeat the process. It won't cost you nothing but your time and giving that person some energy, but they're also doing the same. So it, it ain't even a even playing field. And it, it's just, it's a lot of booby traps and landmines. But I, I will say this, man, um, to Erica's point too. Y'all, when you've been hurt and you've been through stuff in your past, you need to ask yourself questions. You need to decipher and determine what was their fault and what they do, you know what I mean, to wrong me. And what was my fault? What did I not open up my mouth about enough? What did I not demand from this person? Then when it comes to the next person, you can still be open-minded, but your standards may have changed. But keep, be realistic. Like you ain't gonna find a complete 180 of that last person, but it's like, mm, I didn't like when this person raised their voice at me. So maybe that's something you bring up. Yeah, you know, I've had someone raise their voice to me. I really don't I understand that people get upset and stuff like that. But that's like really a trigger for me. I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I ask about past relationships and what women been been through to one, find out how you've been treated and to see what similarities you have. Because like I've had women say, oh, my ex-boyfriend played the game so much and then spend time. I said, shit, I'm a gamer. but let you know now. And it's <laughs> not going nowhere. Like that shit is helpful. But you do have to heal and do the work and just, you know, set your standards and whatever standards you set, be prepared to take what comes along with the standards you set. The higher your standards, men and women, the higher your standards, the harder you're going to have to work to find it. There's a reason why it's high standards. (laughs) Low probability of finding it, but okay. Good luck. What are you willing to do? What are you willing to give up? That's the other thing. You got these high ass standards. You think they're not gonna want something in return? Yeah. Hello. I don't know what you think this is. Um. Interesting point that she said. Other. Um, uh, other cultures get it naturally. Yeah, they they kind of do. It's kind of like a. What is it? A rite of passage in a way. They they go through it. And also, if you look at other cultures and their style of courting, I don't... In comparison to Black people, theirs is a, <laughs> very much over the top and extreme. Like, in certain cultures, like, it's crazy what they expect in courting. So, whenever people talk about, oh... But like the entitlement, this, that, the third. I'm like, have you seen other cultures and what they are asking? <laughs> it's completely different. You're supposed to fill the space while I'm chewing. Oh, sorry. I couldn't. I was, I, <laughs> I wanted them to know that you were eating at that time. <laughs> you bring up a good point. Here's the biggest difference. Rest in peace, Kevin Samuels. I used to be a teacher. The majority of the people I worked with were white women. Let me tell you something. If they had a whole phase, it was short. There's a few that decided to want to be single and hoes. Okay? But their goal was to get the fuck married. And they let dudes know immediately, hey... This ain't this ain't a poom poom party over here. This is what I want. And I'm quite sure, more than likely, again, cultural differences, upbringing. They're coming from married, put together families. So they see it. So you know, dad is going to pull him aside and say, son, this is what the fuck I had to do to get your mom. She wasn't cheap, buddy. White men love joking like that. But it's true. She wasn't cheap, buddy. Get your shit together. Marry a woman. And they, they're they set up like that. They're not set up to focus on cars, sneakers, getting on the internet, all the stereotypical black shit. Some of the stuff we do, obviously it's not all of us, but they don't, they're not even brought up that way. They don't give a fuck about that stuff. They do like experiences though, but like they focus on setting a foundation. They're trying to buy a house. They're trying to find a wife. They're trying to get married. They're trying to have kids before a certain age and be done. And then whatever, whatever. 
Is it perfect? No. Do they still have their issues and problems? Yes. But that's why it looks so different. It's it's a mindset. It's a mindset. And they, they like, them, them women played no fucking games. Like, I was privy to a lot of conversations. And they put their fucking foot down. Like, there's working with the person. And then there's, all right, you on bullshit. This is over. If you go get your shit together, maybe we can try again. This is over. I'm going to the next. I'm on to the next. I'm healing on to the next. They're not sticking around for five, six, seven years waiting on you. Bro, you might have you might have a solid two years. Maybe two and a half. If you ain't proposing, or sooner, if you ain't proposing, but one of them. I also think it goes hand in hand with the, I guess that whole mindset that it's not real unless you struggle. That's kind of put down on us. Horrible. There's no, it shouldn't be a struggle. Like, yes, there's ups and downs and highs and lows, but it shouldn't be a struggle. Love is what you're looking for, what you're trying to mirror, what you're trying to go after. People confuse. I think they confuse the word struggle with work. I've yeah, said, I've said you could put it in. Yeah. Yeah, like I've said this on this show before. You put in work for every relationship you have outside of your romantic ones, your mom, dad, cousins, best friend. That same work you put in there, you got to put into the work to being with the the person you want to be with. And I promise you, that is probably going to turn out to be the most beneficial relationship you work on. You talking about somebody that's one that wants to come like this is this is the most I think personal opinion the most undervalued part of relationships. We not related but it's it's almost like a friendship. This is why I value my friendships. Mm-hmm. We not related but we're choosing to do this. Like you mm-hmm. and me, you are choosing to Actively be here. Choosing. Right. Every day. It's a choice. I don't owe you nothing. There's no blood. There's no there we have no ties. We're just two people in this world who came across each other and said, yo, I like your energy, I like your vibe, I like you as a person, blah, blah, blah. Let's combine our lives. That shouldn't be taken lightly. Not when there's literally billions of people to choose from, and it's like, yo, I choose you, and you chose me. Like, that's that's like, that's like something you should really think about and internalize and that's another reason why I don't really I don't play with people's feelings when it comes to that and I don't play games because it's like yo if you need to move on you need to move on or if I'm not interested I'm not interested because that's some serious shit because I have made serious lifestyle changes and serious decisions personally financially for the sake of a relationship because I don't play like that I don't take it lightly but I think too many people do and my thing is this Back to back to the center of focus, and then we'll we'll move on to shit. We might not move on to that topic. It's about almost an hour. But <laughs> <laughs> see y'all next week. Um, but dang, I lost my train of thought. Train of thought. Train of thought. Oh, um, just be upfront. If you just dating mm-hmm. for fun, say that. You know, Rob, you're a nice guy. I can tell. I'm not looking for what you're looking for. Boom. It's that easy. He's free. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's that easy. Don't lie. Because I'm, I'm I'm smarter now. Like, I set traps now. And I look for reciprocal behavior. If you ain't reciprocating, and I don't mean equal. Like, I'm flirting with someone now. Or I'm courting someone now. And she said something to me about, like, reciprocal behavior. And she was like, oh, I don't know if I'm really good at that, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, I was like, I don't see it that way. Because you're extremely busy. But you make time for me. And your time yeah. is highly highly valuable because I know you. You work, you go to sleep. Like you mm-hmm. <laughs> like you working hard. But I'm like, for you to take that 30 minutes, that hour out of your day just to hit me up so we can talk, flirt, whatever, text, laugh, joke, whatever, like that's time. That's you that's your me time that you're giving up for me. Because of where you are in life. Maybe that's all you got room for. That's cool. I mm-hmm. recognize that and I value that. You know what you I'm saying? You see the effort. Exactly. I see and recognize the effort. And then, you know, when things move or change, that's when you can look for, 
you know what I mean, the the shift in things. And that's another thing too, man. People don't really understand what it means to meet someone where they are. Like Michelle Obama said it ain't no fifty fifty. Mm-mm. Anything Sometimes can it's eighty twenty. It's always eighty twenty. Cause y'all don't do nothing. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> It's, I don't know, it's not, not to say give and take, but like, it doesn't have to be equal, like, oh, I did this for you, now you do this for me. No, because it always, it pulls into something else, you know? Just like you said, that giving the 30 minutes of your own personal time and you're giving me some of that time, that makes a huge of a difference, like, makes a big of a difference because I know I see the effort. Yeah, like, because she's an introvert and I'm an introvert. Our time is damn near equivalent to a date. Like, mm-hmm. if I'm giving, because that, like, don't ever have me out somewhere or waste my time. Because in my head, I'm like, fuck, I could be at home sleeping in my drawers. Or I could be in my drawers playing Xbox, eating snacks in my air conditioning and not being bothered. Mm-hmm. That's what we think. I mean, that's just how we feel. That's just how we're wired. You know what I'm saying? You might not see the value in it, but I love, because it might have a very active mind. Like, sometimes my mind will wake me up and I can't stop thinking about things and ideas and stuff like that. So, relaxing and having me time where I can shut the world out and put my phone on silent is highly valuable to me. And I don't like giving that time up. Especially to do stuff I really don't want to do. I have another post about that that's funny. But Alright, we turned this into a relationship podcast and opinions. And that wasn't the intent. And y'all know we don't keep y'all long. <laughs> so... Um, your conscience, right? We ain't gonna talk about that today. <laughs> <laughs> you will hear that actually the week after next because I did an interview this weekend. Um, shout yeah, out to bro. shout out to Francis Jordan. Um, his interview will be coming next week, so the week after we'll do the conscience thing. Dang, I lied to y'all on Instagram because I definitely <laughs> said for real this time. Do you listen to your conscience? And I posted it in the group. It's fine. I I'm like trying. I like how you did it because you just baited everybody. <laughs> My bad. Like, so when this airs and when you post about it, you can say actually stay tuned again. Yeah, for, stay tuned again. <laughs> I'm about to do that. Like, I do yeah, that. I don't want to become a two hour pod. I don't. I mean, I know that Erica and I are entertaining, but that's a lot. Um, and <laughs> she got a life. I got a life. I'm hungry. My fish is over here getting cold, but it's still good. So, uh, do you have anything else on the subject before we move on to message to the black men? I don't think so. I think I think we hashed that one out pretty well. You ain't got no fine friends in their early to mid thirties. Unfortunately, ooh, no. Unfortunately, no. Message to the I black did, brothers. I'm out of here. I'm done. I'm done. Sorry. <laughs> Estimated how long that song was. All right, brothers. <clears throat> In the spirit of this show, this is the best piece of dating advice I can give you. Um, really know what it is that you want and what you're looking for, and go after that. If you have doubts, concerns worries, apprehensions, so on and so forth, let it be known. Um, As y'all like to say in these streets, stand on business. There was a clip a while ago where Buddy was making bread, but he told Shorty, hey, my dating budget is 200 a month. Once we hit that, or once I hit that number, I ain't going on no more dates until next month. Discipline. Because part of building a life together is actually building the life. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, spending time together, yes, that's important. Having fun, that's important. Making your woman feel loved and appreciated, 
that's important. I'm talking to the fellas, so um, those things are important, but you still also have to build because you don't want the imbalance. You don't want the imbalance of I'm working so much to maintain this that I don't have time for myself, and now it gets to a point to where all I'm doing is working to fund a life and lifestyle that I don't truly get to enjoy. I'm just a part of it versus being involved in it, if that makes sense. Um, But also, real talk, real talk, real talk. If you have an older black man in your life, married, divorced, someone with some experience and someone who has your best interests at heart, have a conversation with them. Like, what do you think of me, man? You know, you, you you know some of the women I've dated. You know, go to them and get some advice. Go to people who are qualified. I would say qualified. People you trust, people you know, people who ain't, who ain't out here doing weird stuff. I would say that. Lastly, 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 and m- probably the most importantly, if you're out here having sex, use a condom. Get tested. Make her get tested. I'm going to say that again. Use a condom. Get tested. Make her get tested. Dog, your health is your wealth. Young people might not understand that. Let me tell you something at 39 years old. I value my health more than I ever have in my entire life. Because I've had two health scares. That was enough for me. (laughs) Thankfully, nothing permanent, nothing too serious or crazy. That was enough for me. It was enough. Um, You don't want an STD. You don't want a baby. You don't want the complications. Because then, once you... Sometimes, you get something you can't give back. Now, there ain't no more sex. Or you gotta go out here and lie and hurt somebody else. My thing is this, Shorty, if you don't value your, if we want to have sex and you got a problem with me wanting you to get tested so I can make sure you're clean, I'm good. Because to me, that says you don't value your health because I don't know you. The end. Simple as that. Red flag averted. Red flag averted. And anybody... And now, if you're really trying to be with somebody, anybody who bought their business and about themselves and that's serious should have a primary care physician. If you have a full-time job and you are paying for benefits, let me shoot y'all some bail. By your late 20s, <laughs> I'll shoot y'all some bail. You should have a primary physician. And S- there's STD kits at home. I prefer you go to a doctor so I can have some official paperwork. Just go ahead and pull up your chart, download the PDF. PDF. Send that over and let me see it. It needs to be within the last 30 days. We ain't playing these games. Yeah. I've done that. My last few relations my last two relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before before we yeah, yeah. No. Well, I want you to get to oh, here's mine. Here you go. Now I hadn't had sex with nobody since this one. You want me to go get another one? Cause it ain't a thing for me. Go ahead. Hey. Go ahead and take this blood, you know what I'm saying? Do all the testes. All of them. Play no games. Protect yourself. That's all I got for y'all. And that's all we got for y'all, man. Look, thank y'all for the continued love and support. The downloads are going up. The feedback is going up. Uh, I see those likes. I see the comments. I appreciate y'all. Erica appreciates y'all. Look at me speaking for you. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, this is supposed to be a podcast about something else. But, you know, when me and Erica gets to cooking. Yeah, we gets to cooking. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, how we that roll. That means it's just marinating. That's that's just that's just how we roll, man. So I'm about to eat my food. I'm about to relax. The gym is going to really kick in tomorrow. Um, because I did leg presses and leg extensions and barbell curls and stairs. So I'm gonna be feeling it. But uh, Ooh. yeah. Take care of yourselves, man. Um, dead ass. You know what I'm saying? Set whatever standards you want to set for yourself. Heal from those past, heal from that past hurt, and don't let anyone pressure you into doing something you don't want to do in this dating world. You know what I'm saying? If they ain't for you, they ain't for you. The end. And until next time, take care of yourselves physically, mentally, and financially, and we'll catch y'all. Peace.